religious hate speech. That's the truth. Have I become your enemy because I spoke the truth? And some people are going to, they're going to hate me. It's the truth. And what I'm going to talk about tonight, you're talking about, I am, I was a Roman Catholic for 16 years. St. Mary Star of the Sea Catholic Church in Huntington Street, New London, and St. Joseph uh, Catholic Church on Montauk Avenue. I, I was, I've been baptized as a baby, though I don't remember it. I am born again, saved, April 25th, 1987. I left the Catholics, came to Jesus. I'm going to tell you where the Catholic Church is wrong. I can tell you pastors out there, every time you pass by your church, make sure you pray for it. I ain't praying for no church that killed my brethren in church history. Matthew 23, 8. But be ye not called rabbi, that's, that's the Jewish religion. For one is your master, even Christ, that's Jesus. And all ye are brethren. There's no distinction. Rabbi means master. That's the guy that heads off the synagogue. And Jesus says, you know what? They're no different. It's a thing called, which God hates in the book of Revelation, Nicolaitanism. I am the head honcho here, and you're, you, you are the peons. Let me show you the Hebrew and the Greek and the original and the better rendering. And the modern Bible. And today's elephants are going to jump around and have a ball. After that, the trapeze artist. And it's about this title that we talked about last night. And call no man your father. Gee, I wonder who that is. Upon the earth. You say, well, you, know, you never called your dad father? Nope, called him dad. Never called him father. Dad. For one is your father which is in heaven. There's only one father. And it ain't a guy dressed in a black suit that wears a tie on backwards. It's a kind of funky, weird tie. It looks like, the, you know, the... The, the little tag on the back of your underwear and might have a big L, a large, medium, and small. And they they dress like this. You'll see that rabbis and, and, and the fathers dress like this. So you will acknowledge them in public because you don't recognize a Baptist preacher, pastor, doctor. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor of uh, 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 theology. You wouldn't tell a difference. Pastors, you can't won't tell the difference unless they got a nameplate on their car or they walk around with a little tag, oh, you know, Pastor, my, and in your name. Here's my card in the church in my name, nothing about Jesus. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. That is the Masons. That's the secret society. You got the Jewish religion. You got the Roman Catholic religion, and then you got the fraternal secret agency. Eight, nine, and ten is all religious. Jew, Gentile, Gentile. Is it okay to call your pastor a pastor and all that? Do you see Baptist church? There's no Baptist church yet. Be, excuse me, but he that is grazed among you shall be your servant. Nobody wants to be a servant today. They want to be in charge. They want to do something. They want to be somebody. And whoso shall exalt himself, you, you, your ego, your pride, look at me, me, myself, and I, da, 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 shall be a base put down. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. It's a complete opposite. The ways of God are complete opposite. All right, here we go. But whoa, when, when God says whoa, it means stop unto you. Scribes, the handlers of the, law, of, the, of, the, of the word, the written word, and Pharisees, the religious group. 
He doesn't address the Sadducees because you know they're just they're scientists, they're evolutionists. They're they don't believe in nothing, but they believe in something. But they don't believe in nothing. They don't even know what they believe and what they don't. Well, you know, we don't believe in the resurrection. Well, Jesus in the resurrection. Uh, that's like me. If I were a Christian, I am a Christian. I believe in the creation. I go to the museum. Well, how old is that T Rex? <laughs> now he's, he ain't T Rex, and he ain't old. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. And we're, we're going to have a ball with this one. For ye neither go in yourselves. Whoa, hypocrites. Neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. You have rules and regulations and your council of Trent. That if you don't believe in Mary, you don't believe that that host is the literal body of Jesus. You don't believe that that juice is the literal body, I mean, excuse me, literal blood of Jesus. You ain't part of the church and you're not going to heaven. You go straight to hell, you're an anathema. I'm an anathema. Anathema means you are cursed. You are wickedly cursed because you don't proclaim the Pope. You don't proclaim the Mass. You don't partake in the, conference, in the confession. You don't genuflex. You are cursed. You're going to hell. That's verse 13. And it says, neither suffer them that are going in, to go in. I'm going to heaven, but the Catholic Church and the Pharisees would say, oh, no, not you. You see, it's not God that proclaims who's going to church. It's the people, the men, and their traditions, and their teachings. The Mason order is you got to get different degrees and the, the, the more degrees you get, the closer you get to God and the big secret. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. What would Jesus do? Jesus would walk up to a Catholic priest and we would say, oh, how are you doing? I'm praying for you. He'd say, you're a hypocrite. Yet yeah, was it nice. I did. I dealt with a guy at the Catholic Church over here. They told him to be. I dealt with a guy. I called the guy a fool. So it's not nice. It's true. For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense to make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. And what this is, is a widow, her husband died. And what you will do is you will go up to that widow. You will charge her for you to pray, supposedly pray, to get her husband out of purgatory soon. You, and this actually happened to me when I was a little boy. I don't know how old. I saw that people were going up and they were lighting the candles. I said, well, gee, okay. I get the little thing, little stick. I followed directions of the people. And, you know, I lit the little stick and, and I, I, I did three candles. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. And Mr. I don't know how to wear my tag came up to me. He goes, Sonny, did you put your quarter in the box? And there was a little box there with a slot, with a with a, a lock. I said, what do you mean I have to put a quarter? He says, you know, when you light these candles, there are people that are in purgatory. They're suffering. You pay to light the candle for us to pray them out of purgatory. Wait a minute, they're in a flame, and if I light a flame on the candle, that's going to get them out of hell? That's what he's talking about. That idea of praying them out of purgatory, and the Pharisees had that whole thing too. That's, that's the Pharisees. You know, the worship of Mary goes all the way back. Christmas and the worship of Tammuz goes all the way back. Esther, her eggs go all the way back. And it's too bad that Christians and pastors and churches celebrate Easter, celebrate Christmas. There he goes again. And you don't even know what the history is. And I had one pastor. I said, listen, I've got documented proof by unsaved people, uh, an, arch an archaeology of everything about I forget if it was Easter at the time or Christmas. He goes, I don't care. I'm going to do it because we like it. All right, so that's what 14 is. Woe unto you, 
scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Way to go, Jesus. What would Jesus do? You ready for this one? I'm sorry, I gotta wipe my face. I gotta drink. Okay? You gotta know history for number 15. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. All right, Jesus. For ye compass, you surround, you know what a compass is. Sea and land to make one proselyte. You go all the way out on a journey on the Santa Maria, the Santa Nina, and Christopher Columbus. And you go to the New World, you go to the Central America, and you go to South America under Christopher Columbus. He was an Italian sent by the Pope. And you go over to these New Worlds. And when he's made, you make him twofold more child of hell, go with Jesus, than yourself. What are you talking about, Stalin? They came over here to first Jamaica, where he didn't discover North America. He went to Jamaica. He went on a cruise. And I'm sure 100% the North Americans, the Native Americans, knew where they were the whole time. Okay, so the Catholic come over after and with Christopher Columbus, they start stealing the gold and the silver. And they take the black man of Jamaica and they bring him back to Europe and they make him slaves. They come into the Native Americas and they sell them giggles and goggles of junk for gold and silver and then put them under captivity. And then for the Mexicans, you've heard about, you know, the missions that are in California and the missions that are in Texas and Arizona. And what they did is they went over there and built these missions in Florida is surrounded by the Catholic Church and Louisiana with their, you know, show your boobies, Mardi Gras before Lent. And they get in there and they pervert all these people by the by the Catholic teaching. And you make them Catholics and you build Catholic churches and you bring your Catholic priests. And God says, you are a child of hell. You came over, you gave them the church. You didn't give them Jesus. Well, you know what the Baptist church is doing today? Invite them to church, bring them in. All are welcome. You know, the witnesses is, is, invite your friends to church. We're going to have a great, spectacular event. We're going to have jumping clowns at one church. The pastor's wife or the pastor's going to get an upside-down clown in Ormond Beach, Florida. In 2017, I think it was. You see, the Catholic Church is going crazy. The Baptist is going Catholic. So they go out and they make all these new Catholics all over the world. And God says, you, you, you that go out in the name of the Catholic Church, you're, you're worse than a child of hell. Why? Because you're bringing these children into hell. Woe unto you, ye blind guides. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, that's the Jewish temple. That's right there, right now, when Jesus is there. It disappears in 70 AD. It gets torn down by Titus. But there's the temple. They marvelous the temple like the Baptists, their buildings. It is nothing. So, by the temple, I will tell the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me temple. That's what it's doing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he's a debtor. So in other words, the almighty gold of the temple. Uh -huh, no, 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 no. No, you can swear about the building, but don't you swear about that gold. And there are Baptist churches. When you get off the Baptist church, I will not get off the Baptist. They got to have the, the manicure grass. They got to pay people to come in and spray the grass so it's greener and buggier free and we got to make sure all the seats are nice and wonderful. We got to have great things. We got to have a carpet color that everybody agrees with. We got to have this. We got to have that. We got to get the air purification because of COVID 19. I asked the pastor and got him real upset. I said, COVID 19 just happened. I was like two months after 
I forget what month it is, all the, all the mayhem. Within two months, I mean, all the world is in panic, COVID-19. And, you know, you can't go to church, but we were going to church. So our pastor said, not my pastor right now, my pastor was them. And then the next church I went to, pastor said, well, we got this air purification. I said, sir, the, fir the first church, I said, sir, how long has COVID-19 been here? He's about a month, two months. And they already came up with an air purification for COVID. They don't even know what COVID is. S-U-C-K-E-R. Because I'm not supposed to say sucker. So they're magnifying the beauty of the temple, the grass, but not the buildings. The Baptists go, they honor everything. I I not know the pastor of church. You know, it ain't a Baptist church unless it gets a, you have a, a steeple. And they went and got a steeple. And they, it was like 10 and 11 o'clock at night. We're out there. We're all signing their names. They don't want to know what I put on, on my name for their temple. I didn't sign my name. I put penis. Styling. That's what it means. It's the truth. I forget what the word is called. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, that's the brazen altar. Old oh, brazen altar. I tell, tell the whole truth, not about the truth. Me, me and this woman here, we're, we're going to get married. We're going to stay hopeful with each other by the altar. It is nothing. Look at Look at their attitude. That altar is nothing. Have you read how many times that brazen altar is mentioned in the Old Testament? More times than the birth of Jesus. But whosoever shall swear by the gift. Now that gift on the altar would be a dead lamb, a dead cow or oxen, a dead goat, a dead pigeon, a dead dove. Because when you put the offering on the brazen altar, it caught on fire. And they're looking at that yeah, that gift that's more important than the altar, the prayer altar, which is inside the plate. And some churches, it's more important to give the gift that goes in the plate than the offering given to God of yourself. The Bible, Paul says, to, to, uh, I'm not going to quote, we are to give ourselves wholly to God. I'm the offering of sacrifice. By giving God me, myself, and all. And I pray and read my Bible. So, whosoever shall swear by the altar, it's nothing. Who cares about the altar? See that? You know what the altar is in the, in the Baptist church today? Who cares about it? It's a stage. Up here now, we're going to have a performance. We're going to have the people going to perform. We're going to, it's so funny, it makes me so mad in the Baptist church today. We don't sing, sing hymns no more. We're going to sing another special music. We're going to sing some more music, opening to, to 289, 387. We're, but we don't sing hymns no more. Why? How did it become music under the devil? Ye fools and blind. All right, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. For what is greater, the gift, the animal that's been sacrificed, or the altar that, sacri that sanctifies the gift? Putting that gift on the altar, and it was all you also had wheat, you had salt. It's the altar that brings the sanctification of that burnt offering. You need both. You need Christ and the cross and the empty tomb to be saved. And there are Christians out there, they don't go out there with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. They go, we got a great pastor. We got a great pastor coming the next weekend. We got a great pastor all week. We got a great church. Come and see our church. What happened to the altar? What happened to the offering of Jesus Christ? The altar of Jesus is the cross. The way of the cross leads me home. Have you been to Calvary? No, it's today. Have you been to our Baptist church? Have you heard our pastor? <clears throat> On him. 
Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, swears by it and by the things thereon. So the altar and the offering are one. So Jesus Christ on the altar of the cross and his blood is one. It's not separated. Don't separate it. Whoso swear by the temple, there's that bill and sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. That's God. No one dwells in that temple but God. And that temple is going to disappear 70 AD and it won't come back to sometime around the rapture before or after the rapture. We're not sure. You see a lot of Baptists today, they believe, you're welcome to God's house, like God lives in your church. The Catholics do that too. They take Jesus, the wafer and, and the wine, the body and blood, they say. And they put him, when they're done, they put him in a box and they close that box. And there's Jesus. He's in a box. We control Jesus. And we will open that box when we need Jesus. And we will close that box when we don't need Jesus. And we'll go to Mary. And we'll go to the Pope. And we'll go to tradition. And so swear by heaven. Heaven's the Betsy. My heavens. Sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereupon. You better be careful of your heavenly expressions. You better be careful on how you use the word heaven. Because the Bible says we're not to take the Lord's name in vain. No, sweet Jesus, 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 Jesus. Or you get up there and you preach an artificial message out of the gates of hell. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you're just using the name of Jesus in vain. That's what it's talking about. It's not just GD. It's not just Jesus Christ in a cuss. It's taking his name and Jesus added, saying the throne, the heaven of God. When you use it, just haphazardly, you use it as everyday talk with no reverence to Jesus, to the Jehovah God, to his heavenly throne. That's vain. And it says that the temple was the dwelling place of God. And that's what the Baptists claim about their church. It's amazing. You could have 50 Baptist churches and you got 50 gods living in them. Something wrong with that. Because that Baptist church on the road is not like us. That Baptist, they, they split from our church. Oh, they're bad. They're wicked. Jesus had the church split in John 6, 66. Paul had plenty of Christians split on him. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. Go, Jesus, go. You pay tithe. Oh, there we go. Open your Bibles to Malachi. We're going to talk about tithing to the church because the pastor doesn't have faith, not you. You ever think about that? When your pastor gets up there and quotes from the law, we're, we're not under the law. We're under grace. Open your Bibles to Malachi, under the law, written to Jews, written to priests. Now you must tithe, and we're, we're going to have a special thing. We're, we're, we're going to challenge God into tithe. We're going to have given money of tithes to God all the entire month. We're going to challenge God. Really? And what, didn't the Bible say you're not supposed to tempt God? Well, you know, I do this thing with the church says stuff, and you know, my business has grew. Maybe Satan's done it. Maybe your advertising brought more people. Mint, honest, and cumin. That's all spices. And have omitted you've forgotten the weightier manners or matters of the law. You don't look at the law. You don't have nothing to do with the law. As much as 23 verses of Matthew, uh, 23 chapters of Matthew, we see the Pharisees, they have no regard for the law. They have no regard for the Lord. But they tithe. You know, there are people in your church, they may tithe, they may go above the tithe, but God ain't pleased with them. And many times, they're going to, I just got one to form now. I've already done my taxes. And they take that form and they put it on their 1040, 1048. Look how much money I gave. Boom. I believe God says, okay, that's your reward. There you go. You ain't getting no reward in heaven. 
I believe it is a sin to tell the government on your tax form, please, please, please reduce my taxes by giving to the church. I've had pastors yell at me for that. Judgment. You know the Baptist church today, they don't have judgment. If they have Easter and Christmas, there he goes again. You're not doing proper judgment because that's paganism. And then when you defend it, that's even more judgment. I told one pastor, I said, I said, here's my website. Here's all the things. I will give you all the resources at the end of my report on what I said about paganism, about Easter. and I'm not interested. Step out of that pulpit. There are pastors that I've had serious things in my family. I know other people that say, and you call the pastor. I don't do that. I had a friend, a married couple I was friends with. They were troubled. They were worldly. They were having problems. I went to the pastor. I said, listen, can you please counsel them? He looked at me. He, you know, he, he's this great guy and going to school enough. I don't do counseling. What? My diploma... I can show you my, my grade sheet. My diploma includes counseling. Now, I may not be a great counselor. I may not be a PhD, but I have been trained how to counsel. Mercy. There's no mercy. The Catholic Church has no mercy. Unless you do what they tell you to do and you honor and love them and respect Mary. Or, or you know, that widow. My husband, oh, you know, he was a drunkard, this and all that. And he, he, he had problems and he and he took his gun and he shot himself. And he committed suicide. That man's in hell. We ain't paying nothing. But he was a devoted Catholic. He had all kinds of problems. That man is in hell. Anybody who commits suicide is hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. Those Baptists down there, they don't believe in, in our mass and all that. They're going to hell. Faith. Oh, come on. You wouldn't think that would be for a church. You're lacking on faith. Ask a Catholic, any Catholic, any office of the Catholic Church, say, do you know of a surety you're going to heaven when you die? 90% of them will say, no. Where's your faith? I know where I'm going. Listen, my bedroom's right over there. There are times I would put my head on that pillow and say, Jesus, I want to come home. I want to come now. I'm going to close my eyes. When I open my eyes, I want to see you. I wake up in the morning and say, oh, come on. Another day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Oh, Lord. If you ask him from the body, present with the Lord. Uh, okay, that's a great verse, Dolly. But it also says it's more needful for me to be. Oh, Lord. I want to go home. A Catholic don't say that. Now, there are Catholics that are saved, and I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the Catholics that are dedicated to the church. These all you have to done the judgment, the mercy, the faith. And not to leave the the other undone. Jeez. Ye blind guys, go, Jesus. Ye strain at it, get napped. Here's the expression, and swallow a camel. You know, you make sure you get that one little gnat. But you swallow a whole camel. Try to say that's a gate in, in Jerusalem. You know, the eye of the camel. Oh, 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 your tradition. You nitpick your traditions. But when it comes to what the Bible says, uh, our tradition, our pope, this is what my family believes. This is what I believe. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. boy, go, Jesus. You make clean the outside of the cup and platter. Now, this is, this is part of where, where they told Jesus, you know, you don't, your disciples don't wash your hands. You know, you're, you're, you're 
your table at your Baptist church has been cleaned and dusted and polished. Your seats have been fluffed and vacuumed. And the walls have been wiped clean. And I heard someone tell me the pastor's wife in the church, she goes out there every week and washes the windows. And I won't tell you the stuff I heard she believes. You clean the utensils. But within, inside you, you are full of extortion and excess. And that's the Catholic Church. Because, you know, you can buy penance. You say, what's penance? That's exactly what got Martin Luther all upset. Penance is, I belong to a particular Italian group of mobsters. And prostitution and gambling and crime. And I'm going to wipe off the planet, Paul the Eraser. And I go down to the Catholic Church and I go into that little booth and I slip in some money. And that priest will say, Oh, God be forgiving you, my son. And then you go kill Paul the Eraser. Well, you know, the Catholic Church has bothered me. And you go through life, I'm okay. My priest is, I've heard people tell my priest. What the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's not a priest, my friend. That's God. You can't go to a sinner to be absolved of your sins. That church in their ways, extortion. There are Baptist churches that will make you sign a pledge card. And you leave that church and you go to another church or you don't go to any church anymore. You're going to get a knock on the door from the law saying, hey, you see this pledge card? You owe us money. Well, I don't even go to you. I don't care you don't go to our church no more. You said you were going to pay us. Now pay us. That's extortion. There are Baptists who take other Baptists. There are Baptist churches that take other Baptist churches to court. When Paul says you're not to, that's extortion. Thou blind Pharisees. Cleanse first that which is within the cup, your heart, your mind, your soul, and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Get your heart right. Confess to God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why churches of all denominations, you got these women that go in there and they're just not properly dressed because inside their heart is still in the world inside they haven't been cleansed by god the holy spirit may not be in them if the holy spirit is in them he's been quenched because within time a, a woman that is that is saved and is honoring god it's in the word of god she'll look at herself oh my god i'm not dressed right I'm not wearing the proper coat. And you don't need to yell at her from the pulpit. God will deal with her. God will deal with the man with the cigarette. God will deal with the man with the alcohol. God will deal with the man that's unfaithful to his family. God will deal with the sinner. Then it's up to you what you're going to do and how you're going to deal with it. Woe well, <coughs> well, unto you. Somebody must be praying against me. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisee, hypocrites. Attaboy, Jesus. For you are like whited sepulchers. You know those buildings you see in a graveyard? Which indeed appear beautiful outward. Oh, look at that beautiful building. Marble, it's white, it's clean. But ye are full of dead man's bones from all uncleanness. All right, the Catholic Church, Fox's Book of Monitors, records the many, many, many millions of people who have been killed. And some of the names are not even there. And they give the exact date of some of them, the names and the, and the ways they were tortured and killed by the Catholic Church over the word of God. And it is a shame that a Baptist preacher will get in a pulpit and doesn't know church history. Well, I don't know what the Catholic Church I've been brought up in Baptist. From I was a little, little boy, 
and I'm going into ministry, and I don't know about the Lutherans. I don't know about the Catholics. Shame, shame on you. Take away your doctorhood. Because you don't know nothing. As I said last night, if I'm going to go to a kidney doctor and he don't know where the kidneys are, I'm walking out of that office, I'm going to find a doctor who knows where my kidneys are for my kidneys. And when your church has taken on the Catholic ways, you are going to give an account for the ways of making those children of hell in your congregation, my friend. When your VBS is worldly, ungodly, 10 minutes Bible and an hour of all kinds of junk and plays and games and, and playground and fooling around. And dun, 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 dun. Oh, boy, we love the jokes. We love the toys. What about the Bible? Well, I didn't have even time to find it in the Bible. It just... I've been in three vacation Bibles. Sickening, gross. I got kicked out of one church for the vacation Bible. I told them the decorations were nonsense. They decorated everything. Well, if you don't like it, don't come back. Okay. Then a couple weeks later, I got a letter. Oh, you know, here you, you, you got a bumper sticker that says your dog is smarter than what well, my dog was. There's stupid kids out there. You don't know that. That's not nice. In the history of the Catholic Church, there has been murder of people of all religions who have stood for God, Jesus Christ, Calvary, and the King James Bible family. The Bible's from Antioch. Even so, ye also have outwardly appear righteous unto men. Oh, look at him. He looks so righteous. That could be a pastor, too. Paul tells the Corinthian church that that pastor may be a pastor of Satan, not God. They look and talk and act, but they're not saved. Be kind of hard when you get up there in the rapture. You're in the clouds. You look, oh, there's my mama. Oh, right. Oh, dad's not here. Here's my daughter. Here's my wife. Here's Joe. We, man, we prayed for him all the time. Just, hey, where's my pastor? Where's our pastor? He ain't here. That great man's not here. <laughs> but right within, inside, you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You look good. But you ain't good. My wife, one time, we, we were at the farmer's market, and I bought her a whole tray box, whatever, of strawberries. She loves strawberries. And we came home, we put them on top of the, uh, the freezer, and we woke up in the morning, the freezer was red. They had taken all the bad strawberries and put them on the bottom and put the good ones on top. That's your that, that's right there. That That is your priest. That is your, your pole. That's your... Pastor, that's your reverend. That's your women preachers. Uh, uh. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. Out of boy, Jesus. Because ye build the tombs of the prophets. Old Testament. Hebrews chapter 11. And garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Oh, you make, you clean and mold the lawns. For the, for the graves and all that. But you put them in the grave. You know, there are some people who belong to a church. They're saved. They love God. They have been rejected. They have been unhelped by their pastor. And maybe the people of that church. And they died in early grave because of no help and no prayer. And would be charged to the pastor in that church. Because we want to bring them in. But we don't want to take care of the lost sheep. We don't want to go after the one. We want to go after the 99 that are not saved. We would have 99 goats running around, but that one sheep that needs the help, no. It says over James that, that a man of religion would go visit the widow and the fatherless. 
Some pastors don't do that. They can travel to Mississippi. They can travel to Alabama for their little pastor group, but they can't go 12 miles to visit you in the hospital. We'll have to have somebody else do it closer. Ah, oh, what's going on, Mr. Pastor? And say, if it had been in the days of our fathers, the Old Testament, we would not have partake of them of the blood of the prophet. Yes, you would, because you now. Remember that, remember that parable Jesus said about the vineyard? They, they, they killed, they're going to kill the son. You're going to kill the man that is speaking. You're going to kill the Messiah. You're going to kill the Christ. You're going to kill the, the, the master, God, Jesus Christ. Don't tell me you're not, you wouldn't have done that. Not very long. You, you, you're going to take Jesus. You're going to have him killed. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourself that ye are the children of them that killed the prophets. Your fathers killed the prophets, and you're partakers. You're going to kill the greatest prophet. The prophet likened unto Moses is standing before you right now talking to you. And you're going to put him on a cross. Uh, shut up. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers. Fathers like the son, the sons like the father. Ye serpents, out of boy Jesus. That's Jesus. What would Jesus do? You're a snake. Run that, run, run that serpent all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 and Revelation chapter 12. And guess who he's saying? Satan. Ye are your father, the devil. <laughs> out of boy Jesus. Is your what would Jesus do? Ban on your arm? Is it on fire yet? <laughs> You go to the hospital. Wow, that's a ring burned around your hand. How'd you get that? WWJW. Or WWJD. Ye generations of vipers. That is a poisonous snake where they are. You got snake venom. How can you escape the damnation? Oh, man, Jesus used the word hell again. Yo, Pharisees, scribes, hypocrite, you're going to hell. Jesus never preached about hell. There he is right there. You know, for some of your pastors out there, you're going to hell. You're not representing of the lamb, of the great shepherd, Jesus Christ. You're a representative of Satan, the devil, the servant. And you spill out snake burden. Now, if you're a preacher and a pastor, you're not mad at me. You're like, hey, man, glory to God. You're on the right side. You're a preacher right now. You're the, oh, how can he? Uh, uh, you better check yourself, buddy. Wherefore, behold, I said unto you, prophets, wise men, and scribes, some of them shall kill you and crucify. This is the book of Acts. James was killed. Peter was crucified upside down. Some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogue. Paul. And persecute them from city to city. Read the book of Acts. Read Fox's book of Martyrs. He tells you how each of the disciples was killed and Christians. That you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of the righteous Abel. Genesis chapter 4. And the blood of Zacharias. Second Chronicles 24. You know what Jesus just did there? He gave you the whole entire Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament is not like your King James Bible. It begins with Genesis, and it ends in Second Chronicles. So, according to the Hebrew canon, God, Jesus just said, you are murderers from the beginning of time to the end of time. Genesis and Chronicles. Genesis 4, 2 Chronicles 24. And all the prophets have been killed. Your fathers did that. Very I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Listen, that's the Catholic Church. 
That's some Baptist churches. You realize there have been some activities at a Baptist church that have caused the death of others? There are some people that go to church, their pastor has died of a heart attack because how the conduct of the congregation to him. He has died of anxiety and worry because of his congregation. He has given up the ministry because of the congregation. I'm talking about good preachers. Churches are closing up. Churches have to merge into other churches. Partly because of the congregation. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. That don't sound like America to me. Thou that killest the prophets. Look at that. This is the group of Jews in Judah. They are murderers. Jeremiah spoke of this. They tried to kill Jeremiah. And stone them which are sent unto thee. Supposedly the Jewish folklore, whatever you want to call it, has, has proclaimed that when Hebrews says that they've been sawed asunder, that they've been cut in half by a saw. The Jewish report is that was Isaiah. I don't know. There has been complete rebellion from the time they came out of Egypt. Actually, not even be, before they came out of Egypt. When, when Moses came and said, listen, I spoke to the I am Jehovah. Hooray, hallelujah, glory to God. Pharaoh says, get to work. Uh, Moses, why don't you just shut up and leave us alone? You know, a lot of congregations tell their pastor, I ah, just shut up and just give us our half hour, 45 minute message so we can go home and go to the chicken place that's not open. Oh, darn, it's Sunday. You really think that your place is closed on Sunday? You really think Christians really care that, you, that they hate you for being closed? Where's it say in the Bible you're supposed to shut your businesses down on Sunday? On bail day. Bail. Sun. Sun. Bail. Day. There's no Sunday in the Bible. The days of the week are the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, the Sabbath day. That's not Sunday. I know Christians are meet on the first day of the week, not Sunday, not Monday. Not Sunday, not Tuesday, not Wednesday. We are to meet on the first day. Our calendar, Mr. Christian, Mr. Baptist, is a pagan Roman Catholic calendar. You're going to date God's Jewish timing, God's Jewish nation by a Pope calendar? You really think God gives a darn about a Roman Catholic calendar? No. You have better luck to do what I do. Sometimes I open up the app and look at the calendar under Israel. And if we're going to go into the 6,000 years, you're in trouble. Because let me, hold on. Let me get my little toy here. I got a new toy. Hey, Google. What year is the Jewish calendar today? Wait a minute. 5,783. According to Wikipedia, the current Hebrew year is 5,783. All right, so 5,783. 5, 5, and if we're working on the 7,000 year, a day of the Lord is 1,000 years, and the Sabbath is the seventh, you got a long way to go. But there are signs in the earthquakes and the wars and all that. There have been signs all throughout all history. The Babylonians had war. The Romans had war. I'm not saying Jesus is not coming, but I ain't going to date. We're told not to be looking for signs. We're to be looking for a person. Jesus. He can come today, or he could be on the Jewish calendar. 
He's sure not going to be on the Roman Catholic calendar. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou killest the prophets. Jewish. Jews have killed God's prophets. And stoneth them which are sent unto thee. God sent the prophet. This is the parable of the vineyard. How often would I have gathered thy children, Jewish children, Jews, Hebrews, Israel together? God says, I want you, I want to gather you up. I want to love you. I want to protect you, even as a hen gathered her chicks under her wings. And she does that when there's trouble. When there's a fox, somehow she makes a move, and all her little chickens come, and she puts their wings around them. And man, don't you come near my chickens. I'll tear you up. I'll pick you. And those little chicks are in her wings. They feel all safe. Mama's safe. She's warm. She's soft. We feel good. But Israel says, no. That's a hard. You know, you know what? You know what is, is the closest thing to, to a Jew in that statement there? Was it Agrippa? Thou almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Man, that's all the air coming out of the balloon in the explosion. Behold, your house, the temple. I like to thank the Lord as we open up our services, invite him into the house of God. It's gone. Your house is not, your church building is not the temple of God. Especially if you got lost people in there. Especially if you got new English Bibles. If you don't have a King James Bible, that's definitely not the house of God. If you're not teaching the right doctrine, that's not the house of God. It's not the house of God with the pagan holidays. It's not the house of God when you've got to have fun. Oh, your house, there's a temple, probably pointing to the temple. Left you desolate. You know what's going to happen? That temple is going to be destroyed. And the Muslims are going to move in. And Allah is going to take over. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth. He's going the way to cross. Till you, <coughs> till you shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You know that, that, so that when Jesus was on this earth after his resurrection for the 40 days, he never appeared to the Pharisees. He never appeared to the scribes. The Sadducees didn't see him. Herod didn't see him. The, the chief priest didn't see him. Only those who believed on him saw him. And you know the news. Hey, did you hear that Jesus is alive? Oh, I got to go see this. No, you're not going to go see nothing. You didn't believe him. Well, how are they going to say, blessed be the name of the Lord? How are they going to, the, the, the resurrection of the dead? When he sits on his throne at the great white throne judgment, you're going to walk up there. And you know how many people before you have proclaimed, Jesus is Lord. That's it. Now, if I made you mad, if I got you upset, you are spitting out nails. I got to say one thing. I don't care. I have given you truth. You hate the truth. You need to get right with God. You need to get down on your knees and repent. You need to come to Jesus. You need to come to the altar of the cross and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. You need to get out of your religion. You need to get out of your science. You need to get out of evolution. You got to come to Jesus and be saved. And when you get Jesus, you're saved. You get the Holy Spirit that comes in and dwells in you. You will know the truth. Without the Holy Spirit, you don't know nothing. It's that plain and simple. Only Jesus saves. 